Good morning out there. Thanks for joining us for another SCZ Live. I am Shanae and I'm so excited to be here at the Pelican exhibit here in our Nganda Island area. Pelicans have always been one of my favorites and I'm also happy that we're here with one of my favorite keepers. We have Emma here as well. Emma has been uh, was a zoo science graduate with us here at Cedric County Zoo and Friends University and is a keeper over here at the bird department. Emma, tell us what you're doing today. Today we're going to feed some pelicans. Um, we're over here at the pelican exhibit, which is right in Naganda. If you're on your way to gorillas, you'll find the pelicans. They're kind of hidden back here. Um, but we're going to talk about what we feed them and things like that. So first, I'm going to show you a little bit about what they eat. We have three kinds of fish that we feed here. This first one is our biggest fish we feed out, which is herring. We have another fish, our medium size. This is capelin, so you can kind of see the difference in size. And then this really small one is smelt. So between the three, it gives them the nutrients they need um, from day to day. We feed them twice a day. In the morning, we put a layer of thiamine E on these herring, and we try to get one uh, medicated fish per bird in the morning. So that way they at least get some extra vitamins. So we're gonna start our feeding. Look how smart our keepers are here at the zoo. They put on a hook to hold the bucket there because a bucket of fish is pretty heavy. It is heavy. pelican so they get at least one. They do steal fish from each other which is a pretty natural behavior. So if you're thinking of being a zookeeper, add fish throwing to your list of techniques to practice. Emma Fred wants you to say hi to Olaf. Olaf is here. Olaf is actually this bird right here, our white 23. He's one of our most iconic birds in our flock. Olaf was born here in 2015 and then um, the keepers actually raised him. So he was hand raised, which makes him a little bit more personable than some of the other pelicans. By nature, pelicans are kind of flighty, a little skittish. They do well in big flocks because they're safer. Um, but Olaf is kind of just a man of his own. <laughs> he likes to be around the keepers. Um, we like to call him our helper. So in the winter when we're cleaning out their building, he likes to help us clean. If we're doing exhibit work, he likes to come supervise. He'll take some of our trimmings from different weeds we're pulling and play with them. So he just has a big personality. I bet some of our parents out there can say their kids are the same way. <laughs> big personalities. We like big personalities though. He is one of our most known pelicans in the flock. We also have a pelican named Spock. And the reason we call him Spock is because he lost, or he, yeah, he had an injury to some of his webbing in his feet, so his foot actually looks like Spock. So that's why we call him Spock. We need to do a special birthday shout out to Willow. Today is her birthday, so happy birthday, Willow. We're glad we can join you on your birthday from the pelican exhibit here at Sedgwick County Zoo. but the fish that they don't catch um, goes into the water. The exhibit isn't very tall, it goes about to my waist. I'm 5'4", so not the tallest. Um, so they can actually reach the bottom of the exhibit to pick up any fish that they miss. And you'll kind of see that behavior towards the end of the feeding. Um, they'll stick their butts up in the air and their bills will go down into the water to pick up anything that they miss. Um, so we, ha we do have two kinds of pelicans in the exhibit. We have the eastern white pelicans, which are the big white ones that you see. And then we have two pink back pelicans, and those are the two gray ones over there. They kind of look smaller. Some people think they're chicks or juveniles, but they're a totally separate species of pelican. These guys are mainly in Africa. They do breed up into Asia and Europe, um, but they're over in that area. So that does mean that their temperature guidelines are a little higher. 
If it is under 35 degrees, you won't see our pelicans on exhibit. If you pan over here to this building, that is their indoor holding area. And they go in there if it's cold, in the winter especially. They're not as hardy as some of our birds in Kansas. So these, again, as you said, are African pelicans. These would not be pelicans that we would find, say, here at Cheney. They would not be. The most common pelican you see would be the American brown pelican, and they're very different from these guys. The brown pelican, which you've seen if you go especially to like Galveston or towards the Gulf, you'll see that they'll actually dive into the water for their fish, whereas these guys do not. Um, they'll hunt for fish in kind of a horseshoe shape, and it's pretty rare for birds like that to be able to hunt together for fish, but these guys are cooperative. They do it together better in flocks, and um, they don't dive into the water. They'll just bob and put their heads down, so they do better in shallower water, whereas the other pelicans do better in deeper water, so they can dive. A pelican looks like a fairly large bird. How, <laughs> how tall might they be? So some of the pelicans, especially the large males, the males are larger than the females. Um, depending on how tall they are, some of them, when they stand up tall, they can look me in the eye. So oh my, my gosh. Lord, they can look me in the eye. Um, they're pretty big birds, especially the large males for the, the eastern whites. They get up to about 22 pounds, which considering how large of a bird they are isn't that big but they still have to be able to fly, so around 22 pounds. The pinkbacks are considerably smaller. They're between 8 to 12 pounds. Their wingspans are pretty large, 8 feet about for the pinkbacks. And you'll see they're kind of drying off. One way to kind of thermoregulate their body temperature is by flapping and opening their wings to try and get more airflow through their body and their feathers. And they'll do some preening. You see some preening over here on the dock. What does the preening do? Um, preening, one, helps them dry out, but also kind of puts like a layer of oil on their feathers as well. Now you said that uh, we have had breeding here at the zoo. We have, yes. We haven't had any in recent years. Um, but like Olaf, he was born and raised here. We've had some chicks in the past that have been hand raised by keepers and have gone on to other zoos. Olaf did go to another zoo, Fort Wayne Zoo. Um, they did call us and send him back because their exhibit isn't like our exhibit. It is um, more eye level and Olaf would reach over the barrier and steal people's cell phones. So he came back here, but I'm super glad that he did because he's a great bird. Why do some of them have the black tips on the ends of their, their bills and others don't? On the bill? Yes. Um, so they have like a little hook on the end of their bill. It helps them in hunting for fish and foraging. Um, it is really sharp uh, if we're catching birds up. That is probably the number one thing to watch out for is that really sharp thing. You can get a pretty good scratch from them. But their coloring is um, like these eastern whites. You'll see some of them kind of have like this one over here has some different coloring around their eyes. They are getting into breeding plumage, so they'll change a little bit of their plumage and the color around their eyes um, towards their breeding area. So April and May is kind of their breeding time. Do we incubate the eggs or do we let them um, lay on, sit on the eggs here in the exhibit? Um, it just kind of depends. Uh, we haven't had any eggs in recent years, but if we were to get an egg, if we are wanting to get chicks, we have a higher success rate by incubating eggs, um, so we would pull them we have in the past and hand raise them ourselves. Their nests are just little stacks of sticks. So they'll just take sticks that they find on the exhibit and put them in one little area and that is their nest. It's nothing fantastic, nothing crazy glamorous, but a small group of sticks is all they really need to, um, to breed and have a nest. We have a shout out for Olaf again. He is the one with the red band, correct? Oh, he has the white band. A white band, okay. Yeah, he's this right one here. on the dock so by here is, himself. Here is Olaf. When the zoo is back open, if you guys want to come see Olaf, he is the one with the white leg band. White left, yes. He, a lot of times he'll be over on the beach or he likes to stand on the rock in the middle of the exhibit and look over all of his other peasant 
uh, flock members. Um, he kind of keeps a watch on everybody. <laughs> there was some questions about their coloration. Um, the, the black on the inside of the wings there, yeah. is, is there any specific benefit to that? Um, no specific benefit. Those are their flight feathers. So you'll see that the black is really on the tips of the wings and the lower feathers, especially Olaf right here, you can good, see. Good, thank you Olaf for black. showing us. That was yeah. on shoot. <laughs> He's pretty good at show and tell. But um, yes, that coloration is mainly the flight feathers. Good oh, that's job, good Betty. job. See we see how well we do here. <laughs> you think we trained them to do that. <laughs> <laughs> is there any type of enrichment that they like, Emma? Oh, goodness. Enrichment is super important, but for these guys, they're so skittish that a lot of the things we add to their exhibit are um, not appreciated. They get pretty scared of anything that's new in their environment. Uh, I know I added a head of romaine lettuce a couple weeks ago, and they all went to the other side of the exhibit. <laughs> so um, some things that we try to give them is different foraging techniques. So we might put some fish up on the island. They do like that. We'll put different buckets of water with fish in them so that they can do different foraging behaviors. If it has to do with food, they're more motivated to interact with it. If we add anything that they've never seen before, if it's a Christmas tree or um, other things that they haven't seen before, they get pretty nervous and scared. So they don't really appreciate that. Well, Facebook family, we are so glad that you joined us today with the Pelicans. We're going to leave you with Olaf right here. <laughs> and to let you know that we have a new adventure that we're starting here at Sedgwick County Zoo. We have had several requests for specific animals to be highlighted on Facebook Live. Um, we now on the um, Animal Encounter tickets area of our website, you can actually go to Zoom with the Zoo and um, register and purchase your own private Zoom with us here at the zoo, either at 11.30 or 3.30 daily. So if you're wondering, gosh, if only they would show me the Madagascar hissing cockroaches, by gosh, we can do that for you. So we're so glad that you joined us here today. We're going to end here with the pelicans in the front. And if you look all the way to the far end, you can see the elephants in the background. Thanks, everybody. And remember, even though we're closed, we're still caring.